Hello, dear friends. This is you and Humphreys. I'm so glad to be again. We're able to bring a word to you. May God bless these words to your heart. They come from Him and not from me. They come from the Word of God. And I depend on the Holy Spirit to give me a word in due season for you. A word that you need. Someone needs this word today. I want to share it with you. I want to speak to you about the King's Highway about the King's Highway. I want you to get on the King's Highway. And if you're a Christian, if you've been saved by the grace of God, believing in Jesus Christ, you are now on the King's Highway that leads home to heaven. And if you're not, I want you to get on that highway today and go home to be with God. And there we find this word in Numbers in the Old Testament in the 20th uh, chapter of Numbers. And, and we read this word in verse 17. Uh, Moses came to the land of the Amorites when they were going out of Egypt and they were going in uh, looking toward Canaan and the promised land and, and he came to the king of the Amorites he said let me let us pass pass through this country we will not uh, bother you we will not eat of your vineyards we will not drink from the water from your wells we will go by the king's highway we will turn neither to the right or to the left until we've gone through now here's a good message for us today. Moses said to the king of the Amorites, we want to go through this country. We're heading for the promised land. There were many, 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 many of the Israelites, but they were going through, heading toward the promised land that God had promised them. And so they came to this country and they needed to go through this way. And they said, now we want to go through your country, but we, we've got everything we need. We, we're not going to <clears throat> eat of your vineyards. We're not going to just take anything of the foods that are from your fields. We've got everything we need. We're just going through. And we're not going to drink water from your wells. We've got water. We're going through. We're on the King's Highway. We're not going to turn to the right or to the left. We just want to go through until we get to the Promised Land. And so it is a good word for us today as Christians. We need to live and we need to see that we're just passing through. Time is so short. We don't have much time. Time is so brief. We need to see that there is a limitation to time. Over in the book of Psalms, in the 90th Psalm, we read the, these words. Uh, oh, listen to them. He says, uh, So, Lord God, uh, so help us to see that we may, uh, we may uh, 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 apply our hearts to wisdom. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if they be fourscore, they're soon cut off, and we fly away. If you live to be eighty, you're soon cut off, and it's not long, and you'll fly away. Now he says, teach us then to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Life is so short. Don't put off doing what you ought to do. If you put off a thing, you'll never get it done if you continue to put it off. Put it on, put it on over in the book of uh, Romans. I want to read a word in the, in the 12th, 13th chapter of Romans, and here's what it says. The time is far spent. The day is at hand. You know, it's like the night. It's almost over, and the dawning is almost here. And so let us then uh, put off the works of darkness, for we are closer now than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore put off the works of darkness and unbelief and put on the garments and the uh, uh, amount uh, of light and the garment of light. And so we say, he says here, dear friends, oh, we know that the time is high time for us to wake out of sleep for, the, for we're nearer now than when we first believed and became Christians. And Lord knows that the time is coming when he's coming back. And so we need, since the time is far spent, the day is at hand, we need to put on the, put off the works of darkness, put on the garment of light, and be ready for Jesus. And so we need to recognize that time is short. The day is at hand. It won't be long till the trumpet of God will sound, <clears throat> and the Lord will come in his glory, and I want you to be ready for him when he comes. The Bible says we can be ready if we're willing. And so the time is short. The time is so short. We must put on and do the things of God while it's day. While it's day. <clears throat> I like the story told about the, the, uh, the professor that was teaching painting, uh, scenery, and murals. 
uh, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, scenic paintings, and, and he took his student out, and, and he had his board there and his painting, and there was a little house out there at the foot of the hill, and he said, now get that picture there, and, and so the, the young man started painting and painting, and the sun was setting out in the west, it was going down, and, uh, and the professor said to him, <clears throat> What are you doing? He said, I'm painting, I'm painting the shingles on that house. He said, friend, you've got not time. You don't have time. The sun is setting. Get that sunset. Get that sunset before it goes down. You can paint the shingles later. The sunset is more important than the shingles of that house. And so it is with life. You can be taken up with doing little things that are seemingly important. But the main thing is to be right with God. The main thing is to know the Lord Jesus. The main thing is to please God with your life. Spend some time in reading the Bible. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in forgiving. Spend some time in loving people. Sometimes you just need to look out and look up and say, God, help me be more of what I ought to be and less than what I am. And God will help you find a way. Quit painting the shingles. Start painting the sunset because there's not much time left and the sun will be gone down. So we see the importance of doing what we can while we can. It is important. We're just passing through, Moses said. We didn't come here to stay. We're not going to live here in your country. We're just passing through. And we're all just passing through, dear friends. We're just passing through. We need to see that. And we're on the way home. You know, I, my wife and I and uh, my little grandson, some years ago we visited Washington, D.C. I wondered at it, and it was a magnificent visit seeing those historical buildings and statutes of great men and, and uh, all of that that's in Washington. And then we started home. We got on the highway, and it was unusual, for we had one highway that led all the way home all the way home, through states after state, but all the way home. One highway. Now we stopped from time to time and, and uh, we stopped at a place at a restaurant. Maybe we wasn't just real satisfied with the food, but we didn't worry about that too much. We were on the highway home. We were going home. And we stopped at the, uh, at the motels and sometimes the bids were not as pleasant as it should have been and things didn't work out real good at some of those little motels but we didn't worry about it because we were on the way home. We are on the highway. And so in life, in life, things happen here and there that disappoint us but we don't worry about it. We're on the highway. We're on the King's Highway. We're going home. We're going home. Hallelujah. And it'll be worth it all when we get home. And so we see the importance of realizing that life is short and we need to do what we ought to do now while we can. Not only is it important to see that it's short and we're passing through, but we need to see that truly there is a King's Highway out there. That highway is a highway that Jesus has given to us. Jesus has opened that highway for us. Over in Matthew, the seventh chapter, and we read these words in verse, uh, verse uh, 6. Uh, go to, uh, uh, no, it's in verse uh, 12, uh, 13, I'm sorry, 13 to 14. Jesus said, Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad the way that leads to hell and destruction. And many go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow the way, which leads to life, and few there be that find it. Oh, there is a way that's broad, a way that's wide. It's broad and wide because you can believe anything and go on that way. You can believe anything in the world and go that way. But over here, there's a straight gate and a narrow way. Why is it narrow? Because there's only one way to get in it, and that one way is through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way to heaven, and that makes it narrow. Jesus said, this is the way to walk in it. I want you to believe in Jesus and you'll get on the King's Highway. It's the King's Highway. It's narrow because nobody can believe everything and get on it. You've got to believe in Jesus. You've got to believe in Jesus. You've got to put your trust in Him as the Lord of your life. 
and believe that when he died on that cross, he was dying for you, paying the price for your sins so that you could live forever. And so he is saying to you now, believe, come to me, and I will save you. My blood was shed for you. My life was given for you. I was laid in the tomb for you. I rose again for you, and I'm coming back for you. So we need to see that the way is narrow because the way is Jesus Christ. We need to see that. The King's Highway is there for you today to walk that road with Jesus and to live that life that pleases Him. The King's Highway, praise God, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for the fact that we're on that way going home. Now, what about the King's Highway? We should not turn to the right hand nor to the left. Like Moses said to the people there, we're not going to turn this way or that way. We're going to stay right on the King's Highway. And dear Christian, I would encourage you to keep looking to Jesus and keep going. Don't look back. Forget the things behind you. Reach forth into that which is before you and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. Keep Jesus before you. In the book of uh, 1 John, the second chapter, we read this is something of the, of the things we shouldn't turn to in this old world. The Bible says, that, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If a man love the, of the of world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the, and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world's passing away and is doomed and is damned. But he that doeth the will of God will live forever. Hallelujah. The highway will carry you home. But if you don't get on that highway, you're headed for destruction. The broad road goes down to hell and destruction. With all of its selfishness and its pride and its doing things the way you want it done, it's going down down into hell and down into destruction. But the way of life is the way of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. And so learn to keep your eyes on Jesus. It's so important that you learn to do that. I like what uh, that scripture over in the book of uh, Hebrews. I, I, uh, 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 Hebrews, and I believe it's the 13th chapter of Hebrews, uh, we'll, uh, 12th chapter of Hebrews, and I want to read it to you because it's a word that we need to read and understand. Wherefore, seeing we are encompassed and surrounded with a host of witnesses, let us lay aside everything and run for Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. And so we get on this highway, we need to look unto Jesus. He's the author of our salvation. He's the one that began it all. He's the one that figured it out with the Father. And He's the finisher of it. When on that cross, his bloody head before it fell, he said, it is finished. He meant that salvation is finished. He had paid the price. He had finished his job. He was going home, and he dropped his head and died, and died our death that we would live in him. And on the third day, he rose again, and we will rise with him. And so, thank God, my dear friend, Believe in Jesus Christ and live forever. Pray this simple prayer with me so that you can be sure that you're on the King's Highway. I want you to pray a prayer like this. Mean it from your heart and pray it simply and mean it seriously oh, and sincerely. Say, Dear God, out loud, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose again. I believe he paid for all my sins. I praise God. Come in my heart and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Praise God. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray that prayer and you're safe. You're on the King's Highway and you'll never come off of it. God bless you, dear friend. God loves you and I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.